everyone. Welcome to the Extra Talk. This week, Europa League, Ajax will travel to Greece to play Ak, not Athens, Ak. I was told by Dimitris, be careful. Don't mispronounce our team. Did I do, did I do a good job here? Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Okay. Uh, Dimitris, welcome. Uh, Luke, welcome as well. Um, you and me are going to fire some questions to Dimitris. We want to know more about the club. We're playing them on Thursday. We have our own issues, so it's always nice to, you know, like divert a little bit, talk about other yeah. clubs. It's like a therapy session. Therapy that's, session. What, that's what I also do when my team have has struggled. It's all been, it's all been therapy, Dimitris, uh, yeah, recent yeah. weeks for us. Um, thank you for being on the show, and thank you also on the su- short notice. Usually, for our viewers to know, mm-hmm. we are the ones that try to get people on our channel. But actually, you contacted us, and then I asked you, can you be on our channel? So this yes. was a little bit of a nice surprise, and thank you. I think also the viewers will appreciate it. Um, let's start with what we always do, traditional. Um, how did you become a fan of Ike? I, I think that um, just like many people in in this world, uh, from uh, it's it's family, it's a family tradition. Although my dad was not an Ike fan, and he was a Panathinaikos fan. And he really pushed me to be a Panathinaikos fan. I have a, a story that includes Ajax, your team, because the first uh, match, uh, the first um, European and Champions League match that I attended at the uh, at the nine years old, uh, it was uh, the the rematch. The first game was uh, the la- I think it was the last game in the old stadium of of, of Ajax when Panathinaikos won. Zero one, and the, the the rematch was the it was the semi final of the Champions League in 1996, where Ajax came to Athens and beat Panathinaikos three nil. So my first game with my dad that pushed me to be a Panathinaikos fan, Ajax demolished Panathinaikos. So I made my choices <laughs> like the rest of my family. So, so instead of your father convincing you, he convinced you to choose another club. <clears throat> Yeah, but but he, he was a bit unlucky because, you know, Ajax was a much better team. Panathinaikos was a very good team uh, these years. Uh, but Ajax, you know, Yari Littmann and fun times for you. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. For all of us. Um, Dimitris, look, uh, we want to know a little bit more about uh, Ajax. I really have to get used to it. You, you can say Ajax Athens. Uh, the, the problem is when people say Athens, it's like... No, it's Ike Athens. You can say okay. it all if you want. Okay, let me ask you before we talk about tactics mm-hmm. and coach and everything, gameplay. Yeah. I think also Lucas dying to ask these questions, but <laughs> about that abbreviation, the I, right? Mm-hmm. What does it stand for? Because it's very important, obviously, you're pointing this out. Where does it come from? What does it mean? Uh, look, uh, A stands for uh, athletic E, which means athletic, obviously. Uh, e stands for Enosi, which uh, means union, and the K it's uh, from the the world Con- Constantinople. It's a very, but it's the the Greek name of the um, of Istanbul, and that is because Aik is a team that was formed by Greek re- by Greek refugees in 1924 that fled that uh, that came in Athens after uh, during the the, the Greco Turkish War. And it's a, it's basically the it's basically a club that was established by refugees. So, uh, in its uh, in its title, uh, wants to hold that legacy, and um, and also the 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 area that was uh, that was founded in the sub- in the suburbs of Athens, uh, near Philadelphia, where our stadium locates, and uh, another another suburbs basically. Um, neighborhoods that, uh, that that had many Greek refugees that fled from uh, from Turkey during the war. So that is th- that is the tradition. Uh, Athens added to the to the title because it, it was uh, I, I I suppose it was a little bit um, uh, tricky for people to assume where <laughs> where our club was located. So. Ike Athens is not really Ike is not really the initials because it contains the location that we refer to. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but 
okay, we can take Ike Athens. We cannot take Athens by itself because pa- Panathinaikos is the team of Athens in the, in the, in the center of Athens. Uh, historically, we are in the, in the suburbs. Olympiakos is in the port, in Piraeus. That's the, that's the distinction in the, in the capital of Greece, of teams. Yeah, it's basically the uh, the soul of the club, right? If we take out the yeah <laughs> the abbreviation, then it's not the club anymore. Basically, it's yeah. A nice story, by the way. I, I actually yeah. knew it because I was looking into it, so I want the viewers also to know the story. Um, I will let Luke also ask a question now. Sorry, Luke, go ahead. No problem. So, Demetrius, I'm I'm a coach, and I lo- always like to look at things when we're on these um, live talks or we talks. I like to look at things tactically and analyze. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the tactics we've used in certain games or the managers, what kind of tactics they use. Who is your manager and what kind of tactical uh, philosophy, let's say, does he bring to your team? And does it make you stand out in your league? For example, are you a possession base and uh, amongst teams that play counter-attacking, do you play attractive football, et cetera, et cetera? What can you tell us about that? Look, our coach is a guy named Matias Almeida. He's, uh, he, I think he was uh, pretty well known as a player. He played for uh, in the glory days of uh, Lazio and Inter, uh, along with Nedved Veron these years in the in the 2000s. He was also a member of the of the Argentinian national team. In he he played in Parma, I think. He he's very well um, uh, known. Uh, but as a coach, he came to he came to to our club last summer in the summer of 22. When uh, our club was in shambles, we had uh, a terrible season. The previous, where we finished fifth, and we didn't even secure uh, a ticket to the Europa Conference League. So, Matthias is a coach that has coached in uh, River Plate, uh, his first club. When uh, River, that was his first job. When River uh, was having hard times, they went to the second division, and Matthias came to came to the rescue, uh, and they gained promotion. Uh, he coached in Banfield and then he coached in the, uh, in Mexico when he had great success with Chivas. And uh, then he went to the MLS for, I think, four years. So his, his background is not, uh, his first job in Europe was with us. And he had, from the first, from the first moment he came, he established a very distinct style, not distinct in, in considering the, the, how football is going uh, in Europe and globally, but uh, regarding Greece, he, he plays from the first game, even though he tried different formation, the identity was clear. We're, we're a high press team. We were very aggressive. Uh, our, our center backs are in the midfield. It's like, He's, I think his main influence, and he also said that publicly is Marcelo Bielsa. It's a very, it's a very demanding team with the ball. You cannot say we are a very, how can I say, possession, build up stuff, uh, Arteta, Pep style. Uh, but in the Greek league, the, uh, the, the quality of the other teams, you know, you, they, they give you the ball. The, the real quality of Ike, you can see it in the derbies, uh, in the Greek derbies, when the opponent has to play. Has to, to, uh, to play from the back, has to um, leave some spaces. And then you see the, 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 the very main feature of Ike, which uh, is the, the ability, uh, to get out in transition. Uh, we are a team that, uh, it c- can easily create with two or three passes when we steal the ball. The, the, the whole, the whole team is, um, it's a very athletic team because uh, even uh, the, um, the guys that are playing in, in the flanks, the, the left backs and the, and the wingers are very quick and very physical guys because they have to cover for the, for the center backs that are not too quick. So the team have, uh, has found uh, a, a defensive stability by covering each other. It's, it's not a thing, uh, we can talk later about that, that we perfected last season and this season i think we have uh, problems with that but it's a price to pay it's it's a price you pay because our team is very demanding very uh, uh, i can say it's a very uh, attack first team but but with a plan it's not like we steal the ball and we throw the the ball to to our striker which our main striker has the ability we have the ability to play like that but uh, I think we we have a a very concrete plan. 
to on, on how to attack and how to take advantage of the abilities of our wingers and the and now striker. I want to go a little bit deeper. Is that okay, Luke? Can I ask? Yeah, you yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you say rightfully so. It's very demanding. One of the demanding things when you play like that is you have to be extremely fit as a team. Yeah. Uh, because usually they say, usually they say, there are not many teams that can press 90 minutes. Yeah. No? So does Almeida want your team to press 90 minutes or is it controlled pressing on certain moments in the game? I think uh, on average we press like for 50, 60 minutes when we are in top shape. So, you know, we start the game, especially in our, in our, in our stadium, which is, uh, I, I didn't say that. It, it, it's a new stadium. We have the, the opening uh, exactly a year ago. So we are a very pressing team with uh, a, a lot of enthusiasm, and very, uh, very aggressive in the 20, 25, 30 minutes of every game. We repeat that uh, in the... Um, in 60 minutes, in 60 minutes, in the 60th minute, minute mark till the end, when you have the, the, the five, uh, substitution and stuff like that. That one you say about the, the fitness uh, thing, uh, it's also a price that we had to pay and we're paying now because our team had a lot of uh, muscular injuries the past year. Uh, we also have them now. As a matter of fact, as I said, our, our uh, the most influential player of the team, our striker, Levi Garcia, a product of uh, AZ is uh, is hurt again. He was injured in the first game we played in the qualification round against Antwerp in Champions League, and uh, he missed the second game and half of that game in the, in Antwerp. And then he he played uh, with Brighton and Panathinaikos, and then he he will be out certainly against uh, Ajax and and several other guys that has uh, th- that had same uh, problems. Is he is he the, he's a striker, right? Uh, he was a winger till uh, the day Almeida arrived in Greece, and he said because he's like he's a beast. He, he's he's much like Broby, but he's more he's wider, he's stronger, and I think his he, um, his technique is is a little bit uh, is a little bit better. Not in the not he's not a, a killer in the box. He misses a lot of chances, but he has the ability to create space for the others. He takes the the center backs. So we are we are a team that our wingers and our midfielders, our attacking midfielders, score a lot. Uh, so it's he, he he's a huge blow that he won't play against Ajax because if you saw the or even the highlights against Brighton, he had two three moments that he was like. Okay, this guy does not belong to the Greek league. He's a he's a level above everybody, everyone else in our team. Look, one more thing, just quickly, because otherwise I will forget for sure. So if I if I understand correctly, Dimitris, Almeida comes in, new stadium, you become champions in a new stadium, first year, double. In, we won the cup as well. Ah, double. Yeah, that's true, and the cup, and then you can play the the preliminaries of the Champions League. I don't know who you played. I mean, did you come in and play Dinamo Zagreb first? Is that the first yeah. one you played? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the third qualifying round against Dinamo, then in the playoffs against Antwerp. Yeah, so that's interesting because you already played against a defender that we now have, Shutalo. That's one. And then you went to Antwerp and you played against Antwerp. And then you didn't qualify for the Champions League. You come in the Europa League, you get a draw with Ajax, with Marseille, with Brighton. Your first game is Brighton away. We all know Brighton is very good, the way they're playing in the Premier League, except for last weekend. But, all right, were the fans of Ike, were you guys surprised by the performance? Or were you guys expecting that against a team like Brighton, who likes to have the ball? Like you said, when when the opposition has the ball, uh, that's where Ike is better. We we expected that uh, th- this was the um, this was how we're gonna play. We didn't expect to win Brighton away. We we expected that we can find um, the areas the, the areas to operate in the counter. Uh, we played a, a, a very a, a, a tremendous defensive match. We had we had uh, Brighton score with two penalties. That was okay. Well, there was some error, but. In order to defend against this kind of deserby ball, you have to be very, you have to be very disciplined. You have to run a, a whole lot. So our team was great. Okay. We, we were, we were lucky in the sense of we got two set pieces that we transformed in, in two goals, but 
if you if you see the match, Levi Garcia lost uh, some chances. Um, we, we played we played our style at the end of the day. Even though we didn't high press, we were, we were like mid block and waited for for them to to come and then uh, defend. But uh, b- because because you said about the um, the two opponents we faced uh, in the uh, in the preliminary rounds of the of the Champions League. Uh, it, it was uh, it was evident that the reason behind us progressing against Dynamo is because Dynamo wanted to play, wanted to, to have the ball, you know, possession from the, from the back. Our, our win in uh, in Zagreb came the first goal. We stole the ball outside of their of their box, one two passes, and uh, an execution. That's that's a, a pattern you see. I think. W- you can see 20 25 goals from last year that was uh, that was a picture uh, against antwerp it was it was really difficult because antwerp really was a low block team they they had a red card in the 50th minute so van bommel puts them in the back and they played around the around the box so we couldn't find the ways to, to penetrate they had toby alderweire who was uh, standing in the middle and no one can do anything near him. And uh, they did the same in Athens, but in Athens they were clinical in the counter-attacks. So they, they beat us. They, in Athens they exhausted us. In, in Athens they, they, they withstand the pressure for the first 30, 35 minutes. We couldn't find a way to, to do this. And in the second half, they came, they scored two goals and they... And they progressed. Dimitris, um, so you said about um, injuries affecting your team from a high press or from mm-hmm. like a, uh, a good press for about 60 minutes. Um, does that mean that a lot of players had to come in that were young players to come and take the spaces of, of those injured players? Is Ike a youthful team? Do you like to bring youth players through the academy and give them first team spots when the opportunities come when injuries happen, you know, say an 18 year old comes in because of your star striker is injured, and then do you make your players through there? What can you tell me about the academy and the youth players? Um, it's not a, it's not a way of doing things. In ge- general, in Greece, apart from one team which is Pauk, which has very uh, a very good academy system, and and Olympiakos in the in the past years, but Pauk has. Has produced some elite talent in the, in the previous year. There are not many top-level Greek teams that trust uh, an 18-year-old, a 90-year-old, even a 22-year-old to perform. So, but uh, it's not like uh, we have we have a, a we have a deep roster. We have a 20-man roster, I can say, because it's not like if, uh, for example, Levi Garcia, our our, uh, our main striker, doesn't play. So we don't have one. We have a guy uh, f- for him, which is uh, adequate, but a totally different style. He's more in the operating in the box kind of striker. If you want to look for a youth talent, I is not the place for, for now. Uh, we are basically we are mainly a team that um, its main force is uh, is um, veterans. And guys in the in, in the late eight in the late twenties, uh, uh, that that that's the uh, the age profile of the of the group. Is this something you would like to see? Like, do, do you look at teams like Ajax and and you know and Brighton and 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 teams that produce players on a regular basis, young players through the academy? Is that something you would like to see Ike do in the future, uh, yeah. or are you happy with the way that the club is being run as it is? No, uh, I myself and I think all the all, all, all the other Ike fans hope to see that because now we're in, um, we're in a very good place. We have a good team. We have a new stadium. So, and the the management have declared that the next step for um, for this team is of course continue and try to be competitive in the in the European stage. And uh, as far for uh, as far for fundamental things, the academy is a uh, top priority for um, uh, for the upcoming years. But uh, even for Greek standards, Ike uh, has underperformed on this level. We have one guy that came to our academy that still that plays. He's like I think 25 year old now. And uh, and apart from him, we have no one like. 
It's not like we, we tried with three or four guys. Let's test them and see if they can perform. It's like we have no one apart from this guy that has connection to, uh, to our academy. And uh, I think this, uh, uh, this might change in the, in the upcoming years. Does that differ from Panathinaikos or Olympiakos? Or is it more or less the same? Panathinaikos was um, was the example for for, for youth uh, for youth talent because Panathinaikos many players from the Greek uh, national team in 2000 that that won the 2004 Euro mm -hmm. uh, came from the from this uh, from this system I think it was three or four uh, in the starting eleven of a national team. But then you know it was the uh, the, the crisis. Uh, many teams uh, didn't have the the funds to to operate. Not for the academy. For example, my team, Ike, in 2013 was bankrupt. We were forced to play in the third division and then come back up. Panathinaikos had struggled with uh, with uh, they they didn't really get but it, it was the normal Panathinaikos thing. They was they were finishing like eighth, seventh. I think uh, because it's a team that also Ajax faced in the in the past. Pauk is uh, is the is the example right now because they are selling players to uh, to the Premier League. They have talents that can say that, that can sell now. So we'll see. You were you were put. You said you were put, uh, or you had to relegate to the third division because of bankruptcy. Yeah, um, I was checking a little bit the history. You guys became champions in 2018. Yeah, we came back. Uh, we were relegated in the third division in 13. We came back in 15. We won the cup in 16 and the the league in 18. Wow, that was the the comeback journey. <laughs> okay, um, that's incredible. By the way. Um, I have another question. We touched upon it a little bit, um, not entirely, but we we're talking about players and playing style. Mm -hmm. um, who, would you, who would you say, if you look at the players that you have right now, who are your best players? Who are players that I should be mindful of on Thursday? Uh, from the available ones, uh, because I, I said I, I saw my appreciation to Levi Garcia, but he, he will not be available. I think the, the most important player in our team is uh, Orbelin Pineda, a Mexican. He's uh, he played in the World Cup. He's a um, he's a member of the Mexican national team. Uh, he came in Europe two years ago to play for Celta, and uh, I uh, secured him in loan on loan because Almeida was the guy that had him in Mexico in Chivas. He knew him, so I think I revived his career because in Celta he wasn't playing. Uh, he didn't have minutes. I think he was like played six games in a whole season, which it's not. If if you if you see the guy, and uh, if you think that uh, the level of Celta had this season, it, it was a bit unfair. So this is the main guy. He's a a guy who plays in the. I I cannot define his position. But he plays in the center. He's in the center midfield. You cannot call him a box to box. You can call him an attacking midfielder. He he goes uh, on the on the left side. He goes on the right side. He's he's everywhere. He's fast. He has he has great technique. Uh, I I think that he's a guy that soon sooner or later he will be gone from our team. Also, he's the most expensive transfer uh, from for this uh, because we hired him alone and then we. Uh, the team paid to to have him for the next four years. Pineda is a uh, uh, is key. I think Steven Zuber piece is is key. Uh, Swiss national, uh, many years in the he was. I think he was the top uh, uh, in Euro 2020. He had the most assists, I think, uh, in, the, in the whole tournament. He played many years in Bundesliga, Hoffenheim. Uh, I don't remember the the other team. I think Stuttgart. Uh, and of course, Domagoj Vida. Domagoj Vida, the former captain of the Croatian national team. He's a little bit old. He's now 35. But you know, he's, the, um, he's not so quick, but he's the leader. Uh, you need that leader. You need a leader if you play that style, that kind of style, because you have to play right the offside when you play in that style. So having a guy like that, it's not, he can, uh, he can run. And tackle uh, Forbes, for example, but he can make Forbes uh, 
being in, in an offside position. So he's very key. He was injured, but he's back now. I think th- these are the guys that you had to to focus. Uh, there is one. Uh, well, there are two. Uh, I saw two Dutch people or Dutch players, uh, but one of them, which is starting eleven, I think, is Norden Amrabat, who plays on the wing. Yeah, Norden, a, a crazy bold guy. We love him. He plays on the wing wing as a winger or more like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a converted he, midfielder. He plays as a right winger. Right. Okay. Uh, we have a. Uh, I, I didn't say we play ma- mainly in a four-two-three-one uh, formation. I, I cannot say we're playing with a ten. We're playing like with a second striker. It's like four-two-two-two, two, two, like that. Uh, yes, Amrabat plays in the right, and I think he will start against uh, Ajax. He had said numerous times how he wanted to play against Ajax because I want. I, I, I think he was in the academy. Uh, he started from Ajax. Could be. I, I'm not, I don't recall from the top yeah, of my head. And, and, the thing is, there's so many players that started at Ajax, so it's... Of course. Of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> you cannot recall all of them. Yeah, exactly. But it could be. It could be. Um, what, what can we expect on Thursday, uh, Dimitris? Because also, uh, just for our viewers, we're recording this on Monday. Uh, you agreed to come on and talk about this right after your game. You had a match tonight. Unfortunately, you lost. But I was we looking at the lineup, and we what have. I did, yeah, what I yeah. did, I was I was comparing it to Brighton. I didn't recognize the names. I was like, wait a minute, they're not taking this serious. They no, want no. to beat us on Thursday. Yeah, full full rotation, man. Full and, rotation. It, and it was and it was the worst game we had in the last uh, two years. In 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 uh, Almeida days, it was the last. Uh, it was the worst game. Do you understand that he did that, or are you a bit upset that he 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 basically sacrifices the game? I I, I don't think he he sacrificed because he he is a guy that that does this huge rotation in in in, okay. in, in, in most of the game in most of the games. But I think this uh, uh, it was a combination of injuries and uh, guys that wanted to. Um, to keep fresh for uh, for Ajax, I think the win the win against Brighton uh, 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 changed a little bit our perspective about uh, about Europa League because when you see the draw, it was like okay, these are three great teams. We cannot do much in this group, but the, the win against Brighton and having a second game uh, on your uh, on your uh, pitch raises the, 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 the ambition. So I think that what uh, Matthias did, he, he kept uh, many of the guys fresh for you. <laughs> for us. Uh, Luke, uh, you, uh, we were talking right before Dimitris came up. We were talking about that it was a little bit strange to us that you're playing on Monday while there is a Europa League on Thursday because uh, Portugal does this. Uh, other major yeah. leagues do this as well. We started doing this a couple of years ago. We don't play when there's a midweek game in Europe. We don't play on Monday. We try to yeah. give actually our teams more rest nationally so we can perform in Europe. Is that normal in Greece, just for our understanding? It's, um, it was a, a scheduling conflict because we played Monday. We played uh, the previous Monday a week ago because we had the game against Brighton. So we played Monday. We had a we had a match in uh, Tuesday in uh, uh, Thursday, I think. So Thursday to to Sunday it was a bit a little bit brutal. So they they pushed the game in in Monday. Okay. It's not uh, Monday games are, are usual are usual in Greece, but not when you have a Thursday game. Now it was an exception. Let's talk about Ajax, guys. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you what's your impression of Ajax because. Um, you found us. We didn't find you. You found us. Yeah. You were doing your research about Ajax. So what's your general understanding, opinion about Ajax up to this point, this season? And also, second question, and that's the final question. Um, what's your prediction? What do you expect? Because you mentioned earlier that your team, when they played Antwerp, they went flying the first half an hour. Would you do the same this Thursday? To, to, to start from the from, from the second uh, uh, part of your question, I think yeah, we would be we would be very aggressive in the first minutes. I, I don't know because with Andres we have to do, we had to do this because because we were we, we lost one nil the first game, so we had to score early in order to uh, to put. You mean the Antwerp game? 
you're, you're talking about the Antwerp game. Yeah, the the the, the rematch against Antwerp in Athens. Yeah. We had to. We were very aggressive in the first minutes because we were losing from exactly. the from the first match. Yeah. But uh, with Ajax, I think in the way that we're, we're going to play, I think we're going to push not for thirty minutes, but for, but but for the first ten or fifteen minutes, we're going to be very demanding and very aggressive. Of course, it, it, it's not it's not a secret. That Ajax has problems in the in the back line. Although Josip Schutalo is a guy that played against us in uh, with Dynamo this year, and he was masterful. It was well, one of the well, <laughs> well. Ajax fans, Ajax fans are doubting whether we signed him or his twin brother. Because no, no. Let me, let me let me tell you something. The guy is a gem. Trust him. Okay, Trust. We do, we but do. you know, you have to find a partner for him because I, I saw that now he plays with Avila, with Hato. P pair, pair him with someone and let let him do do the job. He's he was amazing. He scored against us in Athens. Uh, I, I think we're gonna push. I think we're gonna see a, a very fun game. I, I I think we would be surprised if. Less than three goals gonna be scored with our defense, one hundred percent. Yeah, also our defense. Uh, we we had considered a goal in every game. Look, we also had goal goals. <laughs> also, yeah, look, <laughs> it's funny though because you guys played three two at Brighton. We played three three in Amsterdam. It's like it's a goal frenzy in this league uh, draw. And also, and, and also, if you if you see if you see our group, every team has problems in defense. Marseille, you saw Marseille in the, in the Amsterdam game. It was like, come on now. <laughs> Brighton of, also I mean, has... Yeah, I think Brighton, well, when when the draw came, like two weeks ago, I would say Brighton is the most stable one. from Yeah. Us. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, so what's your prediction? Final. Uh, if we had our, our guy up front, I think we could probably go for the win uh, but now I think that uh, you will enjoy your time in Athens I think that I, I think Ajax are the favorites we you don't want to give a prediction right uh one two one two for Ajax for you yeah yeah for you okay I think the viewers will be happy with that uh, for Forbes and Broby are the main problems for us Forbes, uh, it, it may it may seem that your system throwing the ball from the back and let them run it's not a very effective way and not not always a charming way to play football but uh, without him with us pushing uh, i think you can um, uh, you, you, you can find some uh, very dangerous situations in the in the counter attack i'm, I'm afraid for, for my team for that we can see. Uh, I, I I see. I think if we see a game that ends like three three, it's not. It's not gonna be a surprise. It's not gonna be a low pace. It's gonna be a chaotic game. But I think Ajax has the quality to uh, to take advantage of our from our uh, mistakes, from our injuries and stuff like that. It's a better team, even though you're not in the in your uh, in your best uh, condition. I think you have the the quality to. Uh, uh, to beat us. That's my prediction. Or maybe, I, or, or maybe I'm jinxing you. <laughs> we did that ourselves, I mean. 